Today, I would like to talk to you guys about a new company called Blip Blop. Yes, you heard me right, Blip Blop. They are a new and upcoming clothing brand based in the small town of Plainfield, Illinois. You probably have never heard of this town, but what you might not know is that I lived there for about 18 years of my life. It's where I started my YouTube channel, where I went to elementary through high school and lived my childhood. Although I have finally said goodbye to the good old Plainfield, Blip Blop approached me asking if I was interested in a partnership and I knew I had to say yes. They've got hoodies, graphic tees, jackets, hats, and more. Blip Blop is currently under construction, but that only gets us more excited for their next big drop on the freshest clothing in Plainfield. If you visit their website right now and use the code 18JasonM at checkout, you will receive 10% off on all orders. Support the podcast today as well as your new and local businesses. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the real. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Real Talk Central podcast. For today's episode, I bring to you guys a friend who I went to high school with and college. And apart from that, we also did a lot of things together, such as band and theater. We performed in many different ensembles with each other. And we're finally going to sit down and have a nice conversation. So without further ado, let's welcome Nick onto the show. How you doing? I am excellent. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, it's It's been a little bit rainy over here on campus. But, uh, oh, tough. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> God. I'm inside all day, so I don't have to worry about rain. <laughs> I don't go. I don't go anywhere. I literally, okay, well, I go to work, mm-hmm. but that's it. I, I barely leave the house otherwise. Yeah, I feel like the only place I go to that's off campus right now would be work. So Yeah. I'm having a nice drink of um, mango nectar. Oh, man. It's pretty good. Mango nectar. You got to get that <laughs> mango. I don't know. I yeah. tried to turn that into a joke. It didn't work. <laughs> God, my humor is failing me. You didn't know where the joke would main go. I, I, <laughs> I was how do to... you steal that from me? How <laughs> I don't do... know how I did that. I come onto your show and I get <laughs> disrespected like this. I Ooh. cannot believe I'm going to leave a f- negative one star review on your uh, Yelp page or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Whatever. Oh my God. It's fine. So yeah, like I said, we've done like so many things together. What what did you want to talk about first? We have band, theater, and just like gosh, I just I mean, you know, with with everything going on, it's just been like even just finding a job was like ten times harder than it needed to be. Right. It took cause... me. It took me probably because school like. We officially like went home in what was it like March? Yeah, March. I don't I don't even know. It was it was a long time ago. It feels like years ago. It honestly does. Yeah. Um it's been so long we've been stuck like this. Yeah. And ever since then, I mean, I was doing school, so I was like I don't really want to do try finding a job and try starting a job while I'm at school. Mm-hmm. You know, even though I'm you know, home, but I don't want to do it while I'm in school so I can just finish out everything. Right. And then, you know, we get into the summer and I'm still taking summer classes, but you Mm -hmm. know, there's nothing else to do because everything's closed. So I can't even like take a break from that. I'm basically just, you know, doing stuff at home. Right. So, so for context, you, you had just graduated from college. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So for those of you who don't know, uh, I am a 2020 college grad. Woohoo. I have my diploma. It's in my room, uh, upstairs. And honestly, COVID was hard on everybody, but I feel like grads High school grads and college grads, everybody who like graduated, especially people who are graduating for the first time, mm-hmm. it just kind of, it kind of screwed everybody over. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of places you can, you know, point fingers and whatever, the administration, the CDC, whatever, you know, 
I don't really want to point fingers because we've done a lot of that and we've, you know, everything, all those fingers have been pointed already. We don't need to do any more finger pointing. It's right. like, okay, we know what happened. Let's just get, let's get past that. Let's get fixing it. Let's fix it first. But like, for me personally, there was like, there's so much stuff that I was going to do. Like I was going to do, you know, all the band concerts got canceled. And mm -hmm. I mean, that affected you as well. Yeah. You know, um, I don't think we were doing basketball band anymore at that point. I think that was done. Yeah. The season had just, yeah, that was, week. that was like just before that it ended just before. Yeah. Like perfect which was, time that would have been crazy finish. trying to do. They probably just would have canceled the rest of the season. Honestly. Yeah. Um, I know we had one more game left and it was the playoffs. Right. And, um, and if I the don't band, know if I went to that. I, I don't I, remember. I remember. I remember how it went. It was um, it was like it wasn't officially on the the band handbook, like the schedule for like where we have to play because right. it was like the playoffs. So it was one of those things where the band director said, "Hey, if you can make it to the game, uh, please do so." But it, you know, ended up getting canceled. So right, yeah. So gosh, um, or, it was like yeah, cause, cause there was stuff like that. All the band end of the year activities yeah, that exactly. we do <clears throat> you know recognizing the seniors at the last concert we didn't get to do that oh yeah all of the that. acapella stuff got absolutely canceled right and it was it was and for us for so i was in no control right yes. which is so for those of you who don't know at north central college there are uh four different acapella groups oh, there's yes. sonata problem uh one note stand, which is my no control, group. and tenacity. Yes. I was in no control, which was the all male group. We were literally about two days away from going on a weekend retreat to rehearse all of the music for our like spring end of the year concert. And we didn't even get to go because of COVID. That was uh that was the Dixon retreat, right? Yeah, we were gonna go to Dixon, and so, we were. So yeah, we're, we're context. So for the people listening, Dixon is basically like a like a cabin that the some college student groups can rent out for the weekend. And uh, I, wh where is it at? It's like located in the woods it's somewhere. It's in like Dixon, Illinois, in the middle of the woods or something. Yeah. I so, honestly I can't tell you more than that because I don't. I didn't get to go, so I have yeah, no idea. What more do you need to know? It's a fun weekend retreat in which you get to do like like uh, fun stuff. You can do fun stuff. You can do fun yeah. stuff. You can basically do whatever you want as long as you don't trash the cabin. And it was and canceled. you have to you have to take an adult supervisor on yes. most on most trips. But you know you could find a ton of cool professors that are like, oh yeah, I can take a weekend and <laughs> go. But we we were gonna take uh, Dr. Spitzer, oh okay, as our chaperone, but. Uh, it didn't end up happening, so yeah, that was um, fun. So it my, was, I, I was affected by by uh, the COVID thing in as far as acapella because I'm in one note stand. Yeah. Um, for us, we um, we had just planned out our uh, like the date for our final concert. We were right. in rehearsals. Uh, we hadn't started working on senior songs just yet, but were you guys working on that stuff? What were you like doing we, right when it was done? We got through, uh, I'm trying to remember because I know we got, we started working on a couple of them. Mm -hmm. And there was a little bit of like contention because there were a couple of, there was a few members who, as far as like, because we've had problems with like attendance in the past because we're, okay. we're, we were always kind of like, the fun group, but Cody, who was our president at the time, was trying to get everybody to be like, hey, we need to, you know, we can get better, but we need constant attendance. So just throughout the year, there were just a couple of attendance issues. And one of those people happened to be a senior and he had his own song. Mm -hmm. oh, and that was right. one of the only ones we ended up getting to and learning before we stopped rehearsing mm -hmm. which i i don't know i don't 
you know, feel really strongly about it one way or another. I didn't particularly like the song. It was kind of difficult. It right. it was just not quite jelly. I feel like if we'd gone on the retreat, it would have been like, okay, we can fix everything. Because we would have done everything. All the senior songs, all these songs for the end of the year. But we just we just didn't we didn't have anything. Like my senior song was supposed to be uh You're Welcome from Moana. Oh man. And I didn't tell anybody that because I was really, really excited about it. I was like, it's gonna be a surprise, you're gonna come to the final concert, and then I you, I'm gonna blow your mind by rapping the entire, you know, third <laughs> section yeah. perfectly. And everybody's gonna be like, Oh my god, what the what the hell is this? Right. Where did this come from? How did this white boy learn how to? No, I'm just kidding. But like, um, but I was like, I'd been practicing it forever. I'd been listening to the soundtrack. I'd been doing all kinds of preparation. And um, one of our uh, friends from Sonata, Amanda, was had um, arranged it for us, so we had it um, on paper. Yeah. But we didn't actually get to like rehearse it because that was one of the ones we were going to start over the weekend. And we didn't go. So, Man. and I never ended up performing it. So, I'm I'm going to be honest. I'm going to try and convince Ryan, who's the new president, once mm -hmm. COVID is, like, more under control and people can start coming back to, like, campus and it's, like, you know, you can have visitors or yeah. whatever. I'm going to be like, yo, Ryan, what do you think about – um? Having a having a get together, uh, like uh, like a reunion concert where we all Put do our together. senior song, and I was like, right. it's it's kind of weird because then they'd have to practice, you know, senior songs, and it would be weird because we'd have to come to certain rehearsals and whatever. Yeah. But I mean, I'd like to eventually, you know, if I could, do my senior song with them since I didn't get to. But that goes for like. Cody too, because Cody didn't get to his, and mm -hmm. a couple other people did. They didn't get to perform them. They didn't even get to practice them. So that was just kind of all, all crazy and stuff. And I mean, the thing was, kind of branching off from this, just talking about like end of the year stuff. We didn't get a graduation ceremony, really. We got an online one. We got yeah. one that you know you get on the computer and they say the names and you pick a professor to say your name and. It's, and it's cool or whatever. And right. I had Laura Lodwick do mine. I remember seeing your section because I watched yeah. the ceremony. And he was, uh, uh, she was very, very honored to do that, which is one of the other things is like, you know, you get to the end of your college career and I, you know, I'd be talking with all these professors. Oh yeah, I'm graduating soon. And then, you know, you don't find out just how much of an impact you made on people yeah, really until they're like oh my god you're leaving but you're like the best you know yeah you're literally a god like you know no but like you know yeah, like she was like you're like a senior thing yeah when, like, and you... it was like you know nobody had re i mean you know i get my friends coming to like my shows and whatever even the ones i was working back on and they'd be like oh man you were so good and i'd be like oh thanks but it's almost like you know oh you're taking that at face value right mm -hmm. where it's like oh you're saying that i mean yeah i think i did pretty good but you're saying that because you're my friend and you know but then when you get the professors of theater telling you watching you grow as an actor is like was one of the great pleasures of just wa watching you work was you blew me away like your progression just blew me away like that hits right that hits you right there. Yeah, that's so that's like, one of the one of the beauties of like um being able to work with uh like consistent staff and your peers throughout like like college. We come here, we're like a, we're at a good spot starting out, but then like throughout your progression to college, you like blossom and like get like um, more skilled than whatever your profession may be, and it's all thanks to, like the people around you, your, the staff as well as yeah. your fellow students and. I think that's the beauty of a lot of things, uh, specifically the performing arts, uh, because you know you and I know that like the back of our yeah, mind. yeah, and yeah. and the other thing, you know, we didn't get to do our summer show because of right. uh, oh. because of COVID. 
Yeah. Um, okay. I've got to be honest here. Okay. I was slightly happy that it got canceled for what, for one reason and one reason only. I was taking summer classes at the time. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have been able to participate in the show had it happened. Okay. Because it would have been like doing class and getting to, because before COVID it wasn't like an online class. I would have had to actually like drive to JJC like in Juliet Mm -hmm. and then stay there and then drive back. And it just would have been too crazy to like, Especially without me having a car that I can actually use, mm-hmm. it would have been too crazy to do. So then when it got canceled, I was kind of like, okay, this is sad, but also but it means least, when they come yeah. back, I'll be able to do it again, exactly. which, is, which is one of the things I really want to do because I have not performed in forever because... I auditioned for all three of the spring shows. I didn't get into any of them as a cast member, which was slightly disappointing. But that's how it goes. There's just so many talented people at North Central. Yeah, I did end up doing... I did do Soundboard on Toxic Avenger, which was really, really fun. Right. Because Love that show. Because Grace in the Back on comms. Shout yes. out to Grace in the Back. Just... um the best stage manager I have ever met, question mark, not even a question mark, exclamation point. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous how talented everybody is. Like, you've got, like, sophomores and, and stuff doing, like, mics and, and lights and sound design and stuff like that. And I'm just sitting here like, Wow. It's really you know, cool it, to see like the new wave of students like being involved here and just like theater in general because um um well like of course with theater people like the first thing you do is audition for the show right as, uh, as a cast member and then um either you get in the cast or you get put on crew and um I I've been on both sides I've done shows here and I've also done crew and I can tell you like both I've had like as much fun doing both sometimes I. Um, I've had even more fun doing crew uh, because of the, yeah. it, it was, it's interesting because um, I know in high school, you could either choose to be in the cast or you could choose to be uh, in tech crew. But when you, uh, at least at our school, when you audition for shows, you get assigned to one. And I feel like because of, because that's how it works, people are given the opportunity to see what tech crew is all about. And then they actually start to find new interests that they didn't know that they had before because of like how it worked out. And it's really cool. And it could be like, you know, a blessing in disguise. You know, right. Way. Yeah. Cause I mean, I learned a lot from doing tech on a bunch of shows, like, you know, putting stuff together. Now disclaimer, <laughs> I have so many weird, like my freshman year. So I didn't know that I had. So what you do usually is when you audition for a show at North Central, you you can audition, but you also fill out a crew form. So if you don't get into a show, they can assign you to a crew and you can still get your practicum hours that way. And you can mm-hmm. help build the set and do lights and sound and whatever. My freshman year, I didn't know you had to fill that out. Oh. So like fall, and this was back when we had terms. Right. So like Masters. the first two terms, I wasn't, on a show because I auditioned, didn't get in, and then didn't fill out the crew form. So I'm just sitting on my ass wondering, like, well, what am I going to do? You know, I did end up working a show, I think, fall term. Or was it winter? I don't remember. But for whatever reason, one of the shows, like, I think it was fall term, just the entire crew just ended up bailing. What? For some reason, like, I feel like, from what I heard, it was like a couple people had weird, weird family emergencies that were, like, totally legit. And then other people just, like, dropped off the radar, which was, like, I thought that was really weird that the entire, like. The entire. It was weird because here's the other thing. That's that particular show had, like. 50 something different set pieces 
Okay. Which is why it was like more of a problem because yeah. there were supposed to be all these people like just moving set pieces on and off stage. But now we don't have any of those people. And mm -hmm. it's just like, okay. One so now. we ended up getting four crew and all of the actors had to move stuff as well. Oh, so geez. like the act, which is, I guess, you know, it's nice for an actor if you're setting your own prop because then you know where it is. Uh huh. But, and you don't have to rely on anybody else, but you know, really you should have like someone who does that. So you don't have to worry about forgetting to do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. That was just, that was a really, that was nuts kind of. And I didn't even get, I didn't even get, uh, cause I thought that if you didn't do, it was weird. I was a weird freshman, freshman mm -hmm. kid. And I just did not know what was going on at all. Like I'm looking back and I'm like, man, <laughs> I was dumb. It was, it was, it was kind of bad, but you know, I got, I got into it. It was, it was all right. Yeah, of course. Uh, you, you, was that the same year when North Central did the flick? No, that was soft. Oh yeah, it was your sophomore year. Yeah, I remember. Yes, cool. because everybody else, well, no, not everybody else, but, um, most, the other people, a lot of the other people in the cast, there were three upperclassmen I guess if you're not if you're considering everything from sophomore to senior and upperclassmen, then there were three upperclassmen and the rest of them were freshmen. Right. Because Danny was in the main cast, mm -hmm. and there were three freshmen in the understudy cast, and that was the first time we'd had an understudy cast. That was back before they made that like a mandatory thing. They used to not have understudies here. Yeah, they used to just straight cast people. Wow. And there would be no there'd be no understudies. Okay. And which I think they did that because it was getting so competitive. Oh, and I think I it was so it was it but the thing is, here's the other thing, like most professional shows for at least a lot of main leads cast understudies and we right. weren't doing that. So it's like, you know, it's good experience to be an understudy. Mhm. Mm because then you take notes and you watch someone else perform, you get to put those ideas and some of your own into your own performance. Exactly. And I mean, you don't get to perform as much, but you do get to perform. At least we at North Central will guarantee understudies a show because, you know, in the real world, that's not necessarily guaranteed. Right. You know, they might schedule, they might be like, oh, this one show will be like the understudy guest, but usually they don't do that. So it's mm -hmm. like your chance to perform instead of like, you know, high school where you have like the alternating cast yeah, the or, or cast. even in, even in summer musical, you know, yeah. although that was a little, that's a little bit better about being more like that wasn't necessarily an understudy for all of the people that were dual cast. Mm -hmm. That was just a, that's just a, a product of it's a summer theater musical it's kind of casual theater. It's community, you know? Uh, and you're not going to have necessarily everyone that's like a trained, practiced singer. You know, I mean, even me, mm -hmm. I'm not technically a trained singer, if you think mm -hmm. about it. But like, you know, when you have the roles that are more vocally challenging, like Ariel in The Little Mermaid or... Yeah. Um, Princess Winifred in Once Upon a Mattress, you get yeah. the people, you get two of them. That way, if one happens to, like, get sick or whatever, then you have a backup. And also, they don't have to, you know, belt their hearts out every single night. And then it's, yeah. you know, you don't wear them out, I guess. And um, it's interesting about the, the whole talk about, like, double casting and and understudies because I've been double cast before and I've also been an understudy before, um, the understudy being at North Central. And it's very interesting to hear that um, we actually used to not do that. And you bring up the good point about how like in professional theater, understudies like are a thing. And uh, for college, the point of college is to, you know, prepare the students for the, out, the outside real world. And so for putting understudies in um, shows is a very important thing, in my opinion. Uh, you, you were talking about how uh, understudies are kind of like, 
what's the right word? Not backbone, but like they, uh, in the terms of like, they have to take a lot of notes. Uh, they, they have to be very precise and uh, very, um, they have to analyze a lot of things and be able to pick it up um, and kind of be expected to, to put on the show without being able to like rehearse it too, too much. Right. Uh, Cause you get like, um, usually like a rewarm rehearsal right before you go on yeah. with like, like basic blocking, like even for plays, like plays are a little less, I'd say a little less stressful than musical because you just have lines. You don't have to sing. You don't have to yeah. prepare for any of that. It's just, you know, you have to remember all your blocking, but like musicals, you've got to remember not only like the blocking and the lines, but you've also got to remember the notes, the, rhythms the trouble spots and then the dances if you've got any dancing in your scene right. if you're the lucky one and you're the understudy you're the one understudy that that just kind of stands in the middle and belts while everybody like twirls around you or something but that's mm -hmm. only if you're lucky you know that's yeah. most most shows don't really do that i mean there's probably a couple that do but you know i have no idea i'm not as well learned of musicals as I would like to be, uh -huh. to be completely honest, but you know, I'm getting there. Yeah, of course. Um, going back to, uh, to the whole COVID talk about uh, like how it's affected everyone. So ev I feel like everyone has heard at this point about how the current students are affected, about how we uh, were sent home, we had to take online classes. We, everyone has heard about that, but I haven't really heard about the perspective of someone that had just graduated. So what was, what was everything like once, once you were sent home? Like what now? And after you it, had quote unquote graduated, which you did. Well, you know what it I mean. was, it was, it was strange because I mean, my whole situation was I was missing a few credits because I'd taken some light terms in it, like sophomore and junior year which theoretically you shouldn't do. And then you leave senior year where you only have to take a couple of classes, but you know, I, and then I, you know, I did fail a couple classes in like, you know, a bunch of like gen eds that were just like, you know, you lose focus because it's not what you want to do and you kind of yeah. have to do it for graduate, but I like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not great. And I think they need to, I don't know. I don't think they can completely remove the gen ed system at north central on like a little tangent but like mm -hmm. they need to make it better so that you know when you're taking like intro to biology it's more of an intro class and less of a just biology class because that's one good example of like i took a biology class that was like a 100 level but it was still super complicated yeah for a biology class and it's yeah it was it was it was crazy i did get a decent grade in that class but whatever i i but, feel like the uh the most useless gen ed i ever had to take was anthropology i, oh I took God. it last year uh half of it was uh was online uh which which was i guess was kind of helpful because um when i had my webcam on my room i it was one of those classes where we were able to keep it off and i just like scrolled through my phone the entire time which was not really different of what I was doing in person. Yeah, exactly. Really, no one paid attention in that class. This was uh, taught by a professor where, so first of all, it's anthropology. You could expect it to be like kind of old school. Right. Um, and he did not use any visual aid like PowerPoints. He didn't even write anything on the board. He just went up there and spoke for the entire two hours we were there. So oh my like, God, it, it was two hours. Yeah, oh, it was one of those no. Tuesday, Thursday classes. So it's one, it's one thing for a professor to not use like PowerPoint and not use technology, but for the professor to not use anything and it's just his voice, that was... That's nice. like, that's like I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to take a nap and I'm going to absorb all the information while I'm asleep, like kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was it was weird because the thing is, I am like super super bad with like having it online but also having like because all my game i'm using my computer so all my games are right there and guess what i'd rather be doing right now 
Right. And they're like, you know, attendance isn't mandatory, but you need to watch this video. So I'd like watch the first five minutes and then just, you know. Yeah, just get the general consensus of what you need. And I'm like, and that didn't do me any favors, to be completely honest. So that was hard. And then even after, like, graduation, I had to take summer classes. So even if we'd graduated in, like, the normal sense, I still would have been taking summer classes. Right. And doing that. So school didn't, like, end for me when I graduated, which was, I don't know. And then once I was done with that, I kind of just, well, I started looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And that took however long, like, almost till the end of the summer, like, beginning of, uh, end of August is when I started working. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, so it's, it's been a Mr. Bones' wild ride (laughs) (laughs) because it's like, man, I, I applied to like, you know, 10 or so places in the surrounding area, one of them got back to me, like Mm -hmm. even, even responded, like, you know, there was no thank you for your interest. We're processing your applicant. Just literally applied to 10 places, got nothing. Well, I hate it until the last one. It's so it's one thing to get curved by like, uh, like someone you've been talking to, but to not get a response from the job you applied to. Yeah, like not e- not more. even a, oh, sorry, we're not interested, you know? Like, just, just like... Straight up nothing. Just straight up nothing. Like, I, you know, I know that you probably go through, like, however many hundreds of applications in a day or whatever. But it'd be nice to, you know, or, like, put a tracking thing on your website saying, like, this is where you go and then automate the response if they don't get accepted, you know, just be like, you're not what we're looking for. Thank you for your interest, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So then you at least know like, okay, well, at least they looked at the application instead of just being like in limbo waiting for whatever. But, you know, now that I'm making a paycheck, you know, you can get some of those, those nicer things and you can start, actually doing stuff when you because i was always the guy who was like man i have no i did the moving band chairs thing but i was like i have no money i'm always broke and my friends are like yo let's go to freaking burger king and get like 300 chicken nuggets and i'm (laughs) like guys i have four (laughs) dollars like you know and they're always like they're they're like, Nick, you're such a downer. I'm like, I'm sorry I don't have money. If I tried to get a job while I was in school, I would have, like, failed even harder. So, like, you know, it's like I'm not particularly good at balancing all of the – juggling all of the um, different things. But, you know, I got through it. I made it work. Yeah. Here I am sitting in my basement playing video games, waiting for all of the theaters to <laughs> reopen. Yeah, and, and, we're just waiting. And, yeah, and for North Central to, you know, say, hey, you can have visitors now so I can come up and mess with you guys and throw eggs at your window or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then run because, you know, that's something I would totally do. Well, I mean, you you would you would be doing it to the place that you just lived because, yeah, uh, yeah to the people listening, I'm actually, uh, I live in his old uh, college suite. Yeah, he's... It, it's sort of an apartment-ish. It's like a, I don't know. It's not really, it's like halfway to an apartment almost. Yeah. But we have, it's, we have a living room, a kitchen. It's, and it was really nice. I, that was the dorm, that was the room I most enjoyed living in out of mm. all four years of college. Yeah. That was, that was the best one. I wish I'd known that it was that nice before because mm. I would have tried to hit up a couple of friends and be like, hey, yo. Like, you have I, an open- yeah, I mean, but the first two years of college, it was just me and my roommate. So it's kind of like we didn't really interact with anybody else. And it was like, oh, do we, who do we uh, hit up for that? Uh, we don't really know anybody, but you know, we, we got two guys. It was fine. And now yeah. you guys are in there yes. um, having fun, doing yeah, your fun. Uh, whack, whack stuff or whatever, recording podcasts. <laughs> when you don't have class yeah it's been it's been super fun because i think we 
we both started in the same dorm and we are also going to end in the same dorm because uh, you were also yeah because i was right? in i was in the uh, geiger right yeah i was in geiger i mean it wasn't the best but it wasn't the worst yeah the the, right. the chief complaint i had was the lack of soundproofing because yeah. i i am i'm working on it but i get loud when i'm playing video games sometimes so that's, it would it would be like it'd be like you know and then my neighbors would come and knock on the door slide <laughs> sheets of paper or just shout at me from outside the door and <laughs> you know if you're not in a great mood you're not gonna make that situation any better or anything yeah. so you know but but Schneider was nice because that as long as i get my roommates were like we don't care but stop yelling and i'm like i'm starting to think you do care because that's, that's nobody what Jason else was saying about how you you get loud a, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was like, I was like, they were like, we don't care, but stop. And I'm like, okay, when the neighbors complain, I will, I will, I will try and like, you know, <laughs> I mean, you said you didn't care. You that that that's literally the words that came out of your mouth. You did not care. But then I'm like, you know, they're the only ones complain. I did try because you know I was I was in the downstairs, so I was mm-hmm. with. Uh, Brian, my roommate. Right. You know, so when he's asleep, I've got to be like, you know, not making a ton of noise. Although mm-hmm. he did sleep like a brick, so it wasn't too much of a problem. True. But um, his whole thing was like, if he didn't get to sleep, that's where the issue would come in. Is like, you know, he would come in and go to bed, and then if he didn't go to sleep before i would make noise he wouldn't be able to get to sleep which was like you know the whole thing but we we worked it out so it was that's good it worked well about 89 percent of the time i was going to give myself 97 but i was like that's just not true that's just (laughs) i can't lie to the people like that uh wow it's been crazy it's been crazy so how is banned I've heard lots of things about band. I don't know how much time we have left, but tell me um, about band. I don't know how that's working. So we have, uh, let's say, 12-ish minutes left. Okay, so, we can uh, finish up talking about band then. Yeah, band. Yay, band. So uh, band has been super different. So you and I have been in band together since uh, high school. And we yeah. because we went to the same college, we also were in marching band here. Um, as for marching band... It's completely different. Well, yeah, because you're all you're all like you still go, but you're like spread out, and it's only like one day a week, right? Yeah. So originally we were gonna go about our Monday Wednesday rehearsals like usual, and then also if you're in drumline, you have Tuesday as well. So for me, it's right, Monday yeah. through Wednesday, um, and then we uh, we cut it down for for the full band rehearsals. The full band only meets on Mondays, um, and for the for the rehearsals they're very they're formatted very weird so the drum line is there the whole time and then for the first half the woodwinds come and then for the second half the brass comes they're formatted very weird and i feel like it can be kind of counterproductive at times and we're not even going to be putting on a full show we're going to be making a video yeah and we're not even going to actually be like performing for anyone we're just gonna make the video post it online being like it's there you want to watch it here, go here you go congratulate yeah. us we we're did work we, we did something exactly yeah, i was i was so and i was so looking forward to coming back and seeing what you guys had done you know hanging out at a football game and catching up doing all that kind of stuff because like i mean since trombone wasn't really like my focus I haven't played pretty much at all since since I graduated. Since I right. came home, really, because we wow. didn't. I you know we weren't meeting for band, so mm-hmm. it was just there was no. I I really had no reason to play, and right. I mean that kind of makes me sad because I do enjoy playing the trombone, and I feel like there were points in my trombone career where I could have done more to be a better player Mm -hmm. especially like when i started here when i started at north central our low brass was i think it was 
three, yeah, it was three Souzas and like four trombones. Four, wow, okay. four to six, something like that. It was small. We had a small overrides. I think we had five, but two of them were for a community, for from a community college, and we don't talk about them because their attendance was, you yeah. know. <laughs> so, uh, it, you can you can ask Jason. Uh, well, Jason knows the memes. Jason wasn't actually here. Yeah, when they were around. But if you ask any like of any of the older low brass about, um, ask them about uh, Cleggan and. Mul- Kegan and Laudia, I think it is. Okay, that's interesting. And and you know that's some story. Yeah. Um, but you know, my sophomore year was when I got into leadership and I did section right. leader. How the hell I got away with that, I will never know. Wow. I just because I applied to well, I I applied to be a drum major initially, okay. and a freshman applying to be a drum major as a sophomore is kind of like. Okay, but no, yeah. <laughs> you know, because they just you've you've been in marching band for you may have been in marching band in high school, but that doesn't directly translate to leadership skill, yeah, which is very evident in my case. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I ended up in charge, and that was fun, and we got a whole bunch of new people in, so the low brass grew a lot, and then I did notice that, yeah. Junior year, we got even more people in, and I was still in charge, somehow. Because I didn't get fired by Dr. Mm-hmm. Kelly. I still I still have an inkling that, like, I don't think he played favorites necessarily, but I feel like there were definitely people who he liked over people he yeah, either, had no fe- either had no feelings about or did not like. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, a lot of people that I knew from marching band, especially in the last couple of years, were just, you know, it was just like, oh, he does this, he does that, he does this. But I always thought he was a pretty cool guy. Yeah, for, yeah, for, no, he is, 100%. Like, I think it, it, there are there were times where it was just like, you know, and everybody has those days where it just doesn't, you know, it's not clicking, and everybody's just kind of getting frustrated. And Dr. Kelly yeah. had those days, too. Everybody mm-hmm. has them, you know. And maybe Dr. Kelly, you know, doesn't exactly have the, the not the social skills, but, like, the – the nuanced ability to be like, okay, we need to take a step back and just kind of right. do 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 something else for a little bit and then come back to this, you know? Like, I don't think he was quite as sensitive to where we needed to, you know, be for that. And I, I he got better. He's been really, really good. Yeah, I agree. Like, sophomore year, I thought he was okay. Junior year, it was really good. Senior year did kind of fall apart a little bit, but that was a lot of because I feel like a lot of people who didn't want to be there came back, and then we got a bunch of new people, but it was also like the show we did was just kind of – I liked the show, but I think it was too far – a little too far, a little too fast. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. And – because I know that a lot of people felt like, you know, because the year before it was like Kings and Queens of the Motown Sound. So we were doing, you know, I Want You Back, these songs people know, right? Right. And then the next show was harder, and it wasn't necessarily music people knew. It wasn't recognizable, it, you know? Yeah, except for, like, the last movement. And there was a part in the middle that was like, it was like Sweet Home Chicago and My Kind of Town, which, yeah. like, people might know. Mm -hmm. but it wasn't like instantly recognizable which is like i feel like for a band like ours it would be like that's kind of more of the stuff you do you do like a little bit more recognizable stuff for your show but then you make the show look really really good like the marching and everything you just make the show look really good so even though it's like you know oh this but it looks cool Mm -hmm. it's just like there you go and then you sound really good and it motivates people to like practice it more because you know you know how it sounds, but then you do the nuanced stuff where it's different. Like right. yeah, you know when we were when we would work over our stand tunes and whatever, you know, making them like, okay, you, it normally sounds like this, but see how this note is different, so you have to hit it or whatever, you know. So yeah, of course. Yeah. It's just something I was looking forward to 
seeing you guys do, and uh, well, I guess I'm gonna have to wait a year. Yeah. So rest assured, uh, we're obviously looking forward to next year. Everyone's yeah. looking forward to next year for everything, no matter if it's band or theater or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, you know, because everything is just like super different. That's just how it is, and yeah, we're we're just looking I mean, forward to, yeah. to be done. It's gonna be it's gonna be back to normal, but it's really not going to go back to normal mm-hmm. because I mean, like, even if they make a vaccine, you know, it's still out there. Like COVID's still going to be out there, even if they make a vaccine. Yeah. Cause probably it... like, I mean, it took however many hundreds of years to like get rid of polio. Right. You know? So but like it, if everything is always going to be still a thing, cause like there is a flu vaccine, but people get the flu all the time you know so yeah you know like it's because that mutates and covid can mutate too because it's a virus so yeah you know and it's gonna it's gonna be crazy for a while and especially because we didn't have a great initial response from the top of the house yeah the, the like to the bottom it was just kind of a mess which is why we're in such a bad shape now but yeah you know that's that's the other thing. We just got to, you know, keep moving towards getting the restrictions lifted. People, you know, so we can go back out so things can open up. So, you know, some of us theater people can get a legit theater job instead of sitting in a basement and working at a fast food, fast food restaurant. Hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we could only stay hopeful for the future. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it was it was good talking to you, and it's good being able to catch up and uh, yeah. talk about. Yeah, uh, it's definitely great things. being able to like, you know, get my thoughts out there and be like, you know, because you see all the things where it's like seniors are super like bitter that they didn't get this, that, or the other thing, or like prom got canceled and right. whatever. And I'm just kind of sitting here like I'm sad that it got canceled. But I'm also really proud of the fact that, you know, a lot of places in in our state in particular kind of got on the, you know, quarantine bandwagon fairly quickly. So Mm -hmm. it was kind of like we're one of the better states as as far as I know, as far as I know. Now, I haven't done a ton of research into this, so don't quote me on anything. Right. But we're we're on the we're more on the upward swing than a lot of other states are, which yeah. is which is which is nice because we might be able to you know sort of open up a little bit earlier. Right. But even even then, it's it's still going to be like you know, waiting. If you're waiting for things to go back to normal, it's just it's really not gonna it's really not gonna go back to normal. It's gonna be a little bit different. It might go mostly back to normal, but we've still got to, you know, worry about all this stuff and whatever. Yeah. So. Cool, man. Yeah, this was good. This is good. I'm glad we yeah, were it was, to talk about it. Was, it was nice talking to you. It was nice being on this show. Um, yeah, of course. Of course. Man. I will come back if I ever think that there's something else I want to talk about. Because if you ever need a co-host, hit me up. No, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know if I have time for that kind of thing, but, uh, yeah, you know, we're, uh, we're always looking for a uh, guest to be on the show yeah. and, uh, it was good having, having someone in for this episode and thanks yeah. for coming in. No problem, man. It was a pleasure to talk to you again. Uh, I'm glad to hear things are going pretty well. Glad to hear that you're okay. Um, and it was, it was nice catching up. Yeah. Even if I did most of the talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 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 the beauty of podcasts, you know. Yeah. We get to listen to whoever is like there, you know. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'll catch you later then. Yep. I will see you. See you later. I want to give a huge thank you to Nick for hopping on Real Talk Central, and I want to thank you guys for listening in. If you want to be in the next episode, be sure to send us a DM on Instagram at Real Talk Central Podcast, all one word. Apart from that, we're also open to any suggestions, feedback, conversation topics, and promos. This has been the Real Talk Central Podcast, and we'll see you in the car.
Today, I would like to talk to you guys about a new company called Blip Blop. Yes, you heard me right, Blip Blop. They are a new and upcoming clothing brand based in the small town of Plainfield, Illinois. You probably have never heard of this town, but what you might not know is that I lived there for about 18 years of my life. It's where I started my YouTube channel, where I went to elementary through high school and lived my childhood. Although I have finally said goodbye to the good old Plainfield, Blip Blop approached me asking if I was interested in a partnership and I knew I had to say yes. They've got hoodies, graphic tees, jackets, hats, and more. Blip Blop is currently under construction, but that only gets us more excited for their next big drop on the freshest clothing in Plainfield. If you visit their website right now and use the code 18JasonM at checkout, you will receive 10% off on all orders. Support the podcast today as well as your new and local businesses.